Important. Dull customization is not meant for children. These are art pieces created by experienced artists using potentially harmful materials and processes, including spraying toxic aerosols, using knives, saws, flammable chemicals such as acetone, skin and eye irritants such as clays and glues with toxic fumes, and specialty paints and glosses identified as potentially carcinogenic. Destroying and upcycling figures and dolls is dangerous and causes irreversible damage to personal property. Therefore, viewer discretion is advised and younger audiences should not view this content without adult supervision. We recommend watching the YouTube Kids app instead for kid-appropriate content. Hi everyone, it's me, Diana, the Doll Fairy. A while back, I held a Doll Fairy design challenge. After creating a doll of my own original character, I challenged all of my super creative subscribers to design their own characters inspired by the Kingdom Hearts series, which is one of my all-time favorite video games. I received hundreds of entries, and you can see a bunch of them featured in the video where I announced the winner and showed you all the honorable mentions. It was so much fun going through all of them and meeting all of your characters. For the grand prize, I chose this character created by Mr. Esper, named Yugao. I was so captivated by her design, the muted color palette, the asymmetry of the very unique outfit, and the personality that shined through her expression all called to me to make her into a doll. So that's what we'll be working on today. It took a bit longer to complete this doll than I anticipated, but Mr. Esper was so patient and generous about it that I ended up taking my time to make this doll really live up to the design. We'll be starting with the Blondie Locks as the base for Yugao. Fun fact, not only is Blondie one of my favorite bases to work with, I also used a version of Blondie to make the doll fairy herself. After removing her accessories and then all of her hair, I dunked the doll base in some near boiling water to soften the vinyl at the head. After a couple of minutes, it's pretty easy to twist off the neck peg without breaking anything. I then used jewelry pliers to scrape out the inside of the head in order to remove the melted glue and hair from the underside of the scalp. Then I used 100% acetone on a cotton ball to strip away the paint on her face as well as the scalp. Now we're ready to spray two to three coats of Mr. Super Clear sealant on the head, which will prepare it for a face up. The sealant can permanently damage your lungs if you breathe it in, so only adults should work with this substance and must do so outside using an industrial grade respirator mask. After drying, the vinyl should feel sort of rough and papery to the touch, which means that it can be drawn on with watercolor pencils. While studying some reference photos and doing an initial sketch on paper of Kingdom Hearts style eyes, to make sure I get the eye shapes just right, I start sketching Yugao's eyes, eyebrows, and mouth shape. Getting this initial outline just right is the part I spend a lot of time on. I make sure that the sketch looks just right before I start adding any color. Sometimes I leave eyelashes for later, but sometimes I do them as part of this initial outline because the placement of the eyelashes is so important to the overall look of the eyes. The Kingdom Hearts style of eyes, which comes directly from the art direction of Tetsuya Nomura, are kind of unique and I think very beautiful. I've been sporadically drawing in this style for more than a decade, so I have a bit of practice from drawing Kingdom Hearts characters quite a lot. Once I'm satisfied with the outlines, I reinforce them with a darker brown. Then I start filling in the whites of the eyes and her eyebrows. Usually I would fill in the irises here too, but for some reason I jumped ahead to the pastels. Since she's a Kingdom Hearts character, her shading will be mostly simple, with peachy pink blushing and light colored natural looking lips in a light pink, which will be glossed later on. Next I use some light purple to give her irises some color, but I keep them sort of grayish and misty looking. 
Then I spray her with Mr. Super Clear once again, outside with my mask on. And when she's dry, I start the next layer of pigments. I darken the lash lines around the eyes with dark brown before going to black. Darkening the lines in layers using progressively darker browns before going over them with black looks really nice when you allow the brown to show around the edges a little bit. I keep her irises light and foggy looking, like they are in Mr. Esper's artwork. But I also use more purple, gray, and some more vivid blue violet to give them more depth and color. I also use black to create deeper shadows right underneath her eyelids and make the bottom of the iris the brightest point. The signature Kingdom Hearts eye usually has a relatively small pupil with a thin circle around it in the iris. After a second round of blushing and another layer of Mr. Super Clear, I refine all of the lines and make them much more bold and crisp with some black pencil. I add more shading in her irises, sclera, and also around her eyes with some pastels. After the last layer of MSC, I use some black paint to make the pupils stand out more, and some white to make the sclera more opaque. Then I add some lovely little highlights in the eyes with the white paint. To finish off her face, I gloss her lips with Sculpey Gloss, which makes her lips look more refined. Now let's get working on her outfit. I already have some patterns that I've made, which I can simply modify a bit to work for you gals' very unique design. This leotard came from my Solgaleo dolls outfit, while these pattern pieces were for the crop jacket I made for Rissa, my own Kingdom Hearts OC. I also have this tall stocking pattern from various other projects, and these shorts that were from Rissa as well. I start with the leotard. Since I want it to be stretchy, I'm actually using an old book sock from my middle school days for the fabric. I'm hand sewing this intricate outfit, so I start by hemming the outer edges of the leotard carefully before assembling both halves. I'm also using a stretchy knit fabric for her short white shorts. For her socks, I also need to use stretchy material. I use a loop turner to turn the sock right side out. I make one sock white and the other black. How cool does that look? The jacket will be the most complicated but most exciting part. I have this soft vinyl material that seems a bit like fake leather, but it's nice and thin, so it will work a lot better for this small scale than most faux leather fabrics. I trace the main body of the jacket and cut it out with a generous seam allowance. However, since the jacket will have only one sleeve and the other side will have an armhole, I trim off the seam allowance on that side. 
This vinyl material is completely non-fraying, which I must say is so refreshing. For the other side, I create a sleeve that should reach at about elbow length. Sewing on sleeves can be tricky, and it was a little difficult with this different kind of fabric, but it worked out really well. For Yugao's ruffled collar, I used this shiny violet organza. At first, I was just going to do a running stitch and gather it into a regular ruffle, but instead I sort of pleated it symmetrically, and then sewed it that way, which looked so much cooler. I then pinned and stitched it to the neckline of the jacket. The back of Yugao's jacket features a silver detail, so I stitched that together using more of the book cover fabric. Then I turned my attention to the flowy fabrics that Yugao has hanging from her sleeve and waistline. I used a thin flowy chiffon fabric, at least I think it's called chiffon, and hemmed both pieces. I used white, but in the artwork you can see that the fabric has this purpley ombre effect to it. I've never dyed fabric before, but I thought I might be able to use markers and some water to do something similar. The purple fabric marker I had wasn't quite the right shade, but this highlighter had more bluish undertones, so I tested it out on a scrap of the chiffon fabric. I put some color along the bottom edge and then sprayed some water on it to soften and disperse the ink into the fabric. This looked pretty cool. I couldn't get it to create a really smooth gradient no matter how much I played with it, but the softer tint of purple still looked really nice. It ended up making some pretty cool looking effects. I gathered up the fabric for the sleeve and sewed it along the edge of the vinyl material. After sewing up the side of the jacket, it was a little tough to turn that sleeve right side out, but I managed. Looks pretty awesome, doesn't it? I can't get over how cool the asymmetry looks. For the front opening of the jacket, Yugao has zippers and gray lapels, I guess you might call them. I have a metal zipper on a gray background that I bought a while ago for other projects, and I used part of the zipper to make Rissa's belt. I'm going to use it for the front pieces of the jacket, and it should look really cool. It took a combination of fast grab tacky glue as well as needle and thread to get these pieces situated exactly the way that I wanted them. While waiting for the edges to dry, I use a delicate lilac ribbon to trim the, the edge of the sleeve and cover the stitches. Then I stitched down my zipper edges. It was really interesting to use such varied materials. Since Yugao's jacket is also lined with a zipper edge on the bottom, I glued more of the zipper along the edge. I used tiny wooden clothespins to keep it in place while the glue dries and make sure that the jacket will maintain its shape. I think I actually left this to dry overnight, so in the morning the jacket was all securely constructed. Looking good. One more detail the jacket needs is the black pattern along the left shoulder. 
I sketch the pattern right onto the vinyl material and then fill it in with black acrylic paint. I also gather up the fabric that will hang from Yugao's waist like a sort of half skirt, and I sew it to the top of her shorts. On her left arm, she needs a long black glove. So I will create basically a sleeve that will go over that arm and then paint the hand black to create the look of a glove. Her other hand has a violet fingerless glove, so I paint that on as well. I also use a thin white ribbon to go over her wrist as if it's part of the glove. For the chain belt, I have this broken piece of costume jewelry that I actually got from my grandmother's costume jewelry collection. It feels really nice to me to be re reusing old things and making new art pieces out of things that have been passed down over time. I use a clasp from an old necklace to fasten the chain belt. It goes so well with the other gray and silver accents in the outfit. I make Yugao's necklace from some more white ribbon and make her heart pendant out of some thin black wire. It's so tiny that I can't believe I got it to look this good, honestly. I sketch and cut out some tiny patterns for her headpiece, crown keychains, and the little wing accents that go on her shoes, which I will cut out of some craft foam. I use my X-Acto knife on my plastic placemat that I tend to use as a cutting mat. Don't forget that X-Acto knives are extremely sharp and you can seriously injure yourself or others with them if you're not careful. Only experienced adults should use such tools. I also use this tool to modify these shoes for Yugao. I cut off all of the little spikes and the chain accents in the front of the shoes. Even though they are already purple, they're not exactly the right shade of purple, so I paint the bottom and the heel part in the correct shade of bluish violet. Then I use some metallic silver paint for the crown details, as well as the top part of the shoes. For Yugao's headpiece, I sketch on the details, like where to paint some dots, add some gems, and some swirls. Then I use more metallic silver paint to make them a little sparkly. I reattach her hands and she's looking pretty good so far. I glue one of the little crown charms to the chain hanging from her belt. For the other charm, I attach a jump ring and loop the ring onto one of the stitches in the back of the jacket. I attach some faux leather straps to her shoes and then glue on the little wing accents on either side. Now for a couple of three-dimensional details. I'm going to use Friendly Form, which my friend Dull Motion sent to me, to make the unicorn horn that goes on her headpiece, as well as the skull detail that goes on her keyblade, which I'll get to soon. 
I put the scraps of plastic into the very hot water and they melt into a moldable consistency. Then I shape my pieces and use some scissors and my X-Acto knife to make them just the right shape while they're still soft enough to cut through. The skull shape was a little trickier than a unicorn horn, but I think it turned out pretty okay. I paint the horn, as well as the smaller horn that will get attached to the skull, in that dark purple color. Before we get to the keyblade, let's give you Gao her hair. I prepared white yarn wefts a while back, and now I'll be gluing them onto her head. I use fast grab tacky glue because of how quickly it bonds. As I've said before, I learned how to do this from watching Mozeki Toe's tutorials. It's actually pretty straightforward, and the trickiest part is, well, the part. Flipping the wefts over and making sure that they meet up in the middle is probably the hardest part, but I think the fast grab tacky glue helps make that a little easier too. I wrap some plastic wrap around her head to sort of set and flatten out the puffiness of the hair. While that all dries, I add a little gold wire wrapped around the unicorn horn and glue it to the headpiece. In the artwork, Yugao seems to have little crystals hanging from the points of her headpiece. So I took these little Swarovski crystal beads, put them onto jewelry making pins, and hooked them onto little holes that I poked in the foam. I also added some tinier Aurora rhinestones onto the headpiece itself for embellishment. Honestly, I don't know if I can even explain how much I love the design of this crown. It's so unique and pretty, and it ended up looking awesome in doll form. I reattach Yugao's head, style her hair a bit, and then attach the crown to her head using some pins. Now finally, it's time for her keyblade. For the rather thin handle, I cut a piece of a toothpick with my X-Acto knife. For most of the keyblade pieces, I will be using double layers of craft foam reinforced with some wire. I sketch out each piece to create patterns for myself, and then I cut them out of the foam with a combination of scissors and my craft knife. Some of the pieces are very delicate, so I had to be careful. I use some wire to go between the layers of foam so the blade will be a little sturdier. This foam is sticky on one side, so that helps with placing the wire. I paint the details in purple and black before putting all the pieces together. The layer of stickiness on the foam meant that that kind of messed up how I cut the two layers of foam, but I trimmed it down and I made it work.
I assembled everything, let it dry, and I think Yugao is finally complete. So even though we actually used Blondie, Apple is going to stand in today for the transformation. Here we go! Still can't get over that color palette and asymmetrical design. Now all she needs is her Keyblade. Perfect! Because I was so enamored with Mr. Esper's design for Yugao, it was really a pleasure to make her come to life in doll form. She had a lot of intricate details, but they were all so rewarding. Now that she's finished, I have to say I'm pretty proud of how close she looks to the original artwork. There was also something really special about making a doll for someone else based on their own original design. It felt nice to be, in, in a sense, collaborating with one of my viewers by making their design into a doll. I know how dearly I love my own characters, so I like the idea of creating a doll based on someone else's beloved character, and thinking about how they might react to seeing their character become a doll when they open the box. Mr. Esper sent me a very enthusiastic and appreciative message after he received you, Gal, which made me feel really happy. Would you like to find out how to participate in the next Doll Fairy Design Challenge? Keep your eye out for more information here on the Doll Fairy YouTube channel about the next design challenge and how to enter. I'd like to take a moment to thank a bunch of awesome people who support me and make these videos possible. Be sure to check out my Patreon page if you're interested in joining. I share works in progress, bonus videos, and organize special exclusive collaborations with my community of supporters. If you would like to see more insight on the face-up process, you can watch a real-time video tutorial of Yugao's face-up on my Patreon page. The link is in the description below if you would like to check out the perks of being a patron and what pledge level right might be right for you. I'd also like to remind you that the Doll Fairy now has an official shop with apparel, accessories, charms, stickers, and lots of cool stuff for sale. I designed all of the merch on thedollfairy.com, so head over to check it out and sign up for the email list to find out the inside scoop about upcoming sales and events. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all again very soon for more doll magic. Bye!